Good afternoon, everyone. The spring meeting of Alpha of New Hampshire, Phi Beta Kappa, will come to order. The chapter is assembled today primarily for the purpose of receiving into our society certain persons who, having been invited by us, desire to be admitted to such membership. It is a pleasure on this occasion for me to greet and welcome as our guests, family and friends of these new members who are joining us online. If I can stray from the script for just a minute, uh, it's unfortunate that your family and friends can't be here live with you, but I hope you understand. From our perspective, it is a joy and a relief that we're able to do this in person with you, to share this in person with you. I think sometimes because these sorts, of celebra- or these sorts of ceremonies are celebrations, we take them lightly. But as we've seen the last, this last year, the lack of these sorts of community engagements uh, are really damaging. And so to see you all here today, it's hope. It really gives a sense of hope for better days to come soon. And more importantly, it reaffirms the importance of our community bonds. Now, as this gathering is of an ongoing organization, it is traditional at this ceremony to call for a reading of the minutes of our prior meeting, which occurred on November 17th, 2020. However, if I hear no objections, we will dispense with the reading of the minutes. I would be the one who has to read them, so I'm happy to hear no objection. Okay, I, hearing, hearing no objections, we will dispense with the reading of the minutes. The simple truth is that if I had heard an objection, I would not have heard the objection. <laughs> so. Before proceeding with the initiation of seniors and others, I should like now to recognize 22 men and women whose names appear within the agenda for this meeting who were elected to membership at our autumn meeting on November 17th, 2020, as a result of scholastic attainment through the junior year of their undergraduate course. Uh, I would like to add, ask those members in this category who are here in attendance to please stand. Oh, back there. Thank you very much. Let us continue. I'm really excited to be inducted, and I'd just like to take a moment to thank all the really awesome professors I've had here at Dartmouth. Hi everyone, I'm Leah. Congrats to everyone being honored here today. I'm so grateful to be part of it. A quick thank you to the Dartmouth College English Department and my mentor, George Edmondson, and most importantly to my parents. Thanks everybody. I'm so pleased to be inducted today. I'd like to thank my friends and family for all their support, particularly Leah, my favorite member of the family. Hi, my name is Rachel, and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to my parents, Meg and Andy, uh, for being my constant cheerleaders and just making everything that I do possible. Love you guys so much. Hi, my name is Max Mickenberg. Thank you so much for this honor, and I just want to thank my mom, my dad, my brother, my friends for everything that they've done along the way and, and all of their help. Hi, I'm Devin Mifflin, and I'm an art history major, and I'd like to thank my parents for their incredible support. Now we will continue. Madam Secretary, are there candidates for election to be brought before this meeting? Yes, Mr. President. And acting on behalf of the chapter, I place in nomination and ask the election of the persons whose names are entered on the agenda for this meeting as distributed to those here in attendance. Is there a second to the motion to elect the persons nominated? 
<laughs> There's something not right about this. You're not members yet, so but well, I'll I'll take that as well. A second. I, I will second. Well, I, you first, so you you can second. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, anybody? Anyone opposed to the motion? Then it's unanimous. The election of those persons whose names appear on the reverse side of the agenda has been moved, seconded, and unanimously approved. Now that you new inductees have been elected to membership, I believe a formal welcome is appropriate. Before proceeding further, however, allow me to note that the Dartmouth chapter, Alpha of New Hampshire, is the fourth oldest chapter of Phi Beta Kappa and was founded in 1787. Consequently, the language and the ritual may strike you as a bit archaic. For example, of the three founding principles of the society, fraternity, morality, and literature, it might be useful to know that the term literature was used in the 18th century to refer to knowledge, to letters in that broad sense, and then to regard fraternity as companionship in the pursuit of knowledge. Thus, having been assembled for the purpose of receiving you into the membership of Phi Beta Kappa and its Alpha of New Hampshire, this chapter welcomes each of you most heartily. In order that you may know more of the character and underlying principles of Phi Beta Kappa, I again call upon our secretary, Kate Soule, to share with you the categories of membership from our Constitution. Madam Secretary. Thank you. There shall be three classes of members, regular, alumni, and honorary. The following persons are eligible for regular membership. A, any undergraduate who, on October 15th of the fall term, three years after matriculation, who has completed at least eight terms at Dartmouth College, and who ranks among the 20 highest in that category. Those are the ones that we just honored a moment ago. B, any student who, at the time of graduation from Dartmouth College, has an average standing no lower than the average of that achieved by graduates within the top tenth of those graduating in the preceding three academic years. That's all of you. Um, no student who has been suspended from Dartmouth College is eligible for membership in Phi Beta Kappa. An alumnus or alumna of Dartmouth College whose work since graduation shall be deemed of such a character as to entitle him or her to membership may be elected to alumni membership. We will have one of those later. And any person distinguished in letters, science, or education may be elected to honorary membership. And all honorary members shall be entitled to all of the rights and privileges of regular membership. We are also inducting an honorary member today. In addition to scholarship, good moral character shall be a necessary specification for membership. And any member who is found to have lost this qualification may be expelled from the society by a four-fifths vote of the members present and voting at an annual meeting of the chapter, provided there be at least 30 members at such a meeting. Your election is in recognition of your outstanding attainments in scholarly pursuits and of your manifestation of high character and of a deep interest in the life of this college. With these records and attainments in view, you are now offered membership in this chapter of Phi Beta Kappa and admission to the fraternity's ever-widening circle. Before giving your pledge of loyalty, it is proper that you be informed more fully with respect to Phi Beta Kappa's history, ideals, and purpose. I now call on Vice President of our chapter, Professor Susanna Heschel, to give a summary of the Society's history. On December 5th, 1776, a group of young men, students of the College of William and Mary in Virginia, met in the Apollo Room of the Raleigh Tavern in Williamsburg, Virginia, to form the Phi Beta Kappa Society. As described on the Phi Beta Kappa website, they believed that a new nation required new institutions, cultural as well as political, and they were committed to intellectual fellowship shaped by the values of personal freedom, scientific inquiry, liberty of conscience, and creative endeavor. During those turbulent times of the Revolutionary War, they envisioned Phi Beta Kappa as a secret society that would give its members the freedom to discuss any topic they chose. Ever since, freedom of inquiry and expression have served as hallmarks of Phi Beta Kappa, 
though, starting in the 1830s, the requirement of secrecy ended. In the Phi Beta Kappa Handbook, you will find a brief account of the early days of the society in Virginia and of the fortunate creation of New England branches at Yale in 1780, Harvard in 1781, and Dartmouth in 1787, which ensured the perpetuation and propagation of the society when the parent chapter in Virginia became inactive. In an address on the history of the New Hampshire Alpha, delivered at the bicentennial meeting of this chapter in 1987, Dartmouth historian Professor Jerry Danielle noticed that during the 1830s, students were turning away from the pursuit of intellectual accomplishment, and there was, he said, a gradual decline of debating in the social clubs, a corresponding rise in the kinds of behavior we associate with fraternities today, and the appearance on the campus of competing Greek letter groups who made no pretense of intellectual accomplishment. To maintain the high standards of Phi Beta Kappa, faculty members of the Alpha Chapter at Dartmouth voted in 1845 in what Professor Danielle termed a small coup d'etat to make outstanding scholarship the primary criterion for selection. Their vote held despite opposition from the undergraduate members and was put into effect in the chapter's 1899 constitution. Exceptional scholarship is the sole criterion for membership in Phi Beta Kappa. In 1914, Dartmouth College formally recognized Phi Beta Kappa as an honor society, which is why your induction into Phi Beta Kappa is noted on your transcript. The New England chapters led the way in the 1870s by including women and African Americans as members. In 1883, Phi Beta Kappa became a national organization with 25 chapters around the country. Phi Beta Kappa continues to grow, and today there are 290 chapters at American colleges and universities and nearly 50 active alumni associations located in all regions of the country. Phi Beta Kappa is America's most prestigious academic honor society and a national advocate for the arts and sciences. Its members include 17 United States presidents, 41 Supreme Court justices, and more than 140 Nobel Prize laureates. To be inducted into membership of Phi Beta Kappa is a supreme honor and a tribute to academic achievement at the highest level. I would like to draw your attention now to the Phi Beta Kappa key, the symbol of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. You can see it here. I believe there'll be a slide in a, in a minute. Um, the Phi Beta Kappa key of today bears the insignia of the medal adopted December 5th, 1776. The three Greek letters, Phi Beta Kappa, are the initials of the Greek motto, Philosophia Biu Kubernatis which is interpreted to mean love of wisdom is the guide of life. The three stars indicate the three fundamental principles of the society, fraternity, morality, and literature. And the index pointing to the stars indicates the high aspirations of the members. On the reverse, the letters SP are the initials of the Latin words Societas Philosophiae, which are in harmony with the Greek motto on the obverse. Above these initials, the name and chapter of the wearer may be engraved. The date, December 5th, 1776, was engraved on the earliest medals and indicates the time of the Society's formal organization at the Raleigh Tavern in Williamsburg, Virginia. A 1963 brochure on the history of the Phi Beta Kappa key uncovers the answer to why what was originally called a badge has become a key. The original badge, devised by the chapter of the College of William and Mary, was four square, with only a ring at the top to hang from a chain. But it was apparently an innovation at the Yale chapter around 1806 that added both an upper stem and what the brochure called a lower ferrule. 
When first added, you see, the ferrule was iron. It was square in shape with a hollow end, and it was designed to be a key to wind up a watch. Soon enough, watches changed, however, and so the lower ferrule was changed to solid gold, and the key became symbolic, though symbolic of what uh, is not really said. All wearers of the key are thus assured that they belong to one of the oldest college organizations in this country and the oldest society formed for the encouragement of scholarship and the union of those engaged in scholarly pursuits. Now that you've been informed of the history and symbolism of our society, the formal initiation can begin. I would ask all the inductees to please stand. <clears throat> you have heard statements respecting Phi Beta Kappa, its principles and purposes. I now ask you, in words first employed in 1779, and therefore venerable in the usages of our society, to affirm the following, that you will, with all your possible efforts, endeavor to prove true, just, and deeply attached to this, our growing society. And that in addition to this ancient pledge, you affirm that in all your relations you will adhere to the principles of the philosophy, which its founders accepted as the, principle, as the inspiration of life, namely fraternity, morality, and literature. That you will earnestly aid the society in every appropriate way to attain its educational ideals as set forth by the United Chapters. Do you so affirm? Please raise your right hand and answer, I do. Okay. Please be seated. We will now play a compilation video honoring our inductees.
was a lovely compilation, all those glamour shots. You must be, you must be the most, you are the most photographed generation in the history of the world, but it's great. So recognizing as we do the talent and worth which you have evinced, I now greet you as full members of Phi Beta Kappa, being well assured that it will be your ambition to maintain and perpetuate the traditions and principles of this ancient and honorable society. May you ever seek to promote fraternity, morality, and literature. I have the further pleasure of introducing you to your new associates here present and of admitting you to the goodly fellowship of members who, for 245 years, 234 years for our chapter, of constant and consistent endeavor, have made notable the name of Phi Beta Kappa. I shall conclude the charge in the words of the ritual of 1779. You all at this moment experience in yourselves the heartfelt satisfaction which I do at this our valuable acquisition. Friendship herself, pleased with her success, now smiles at this addition to our fraternity. Let it be our joint care to extend the friendship which has ever been exercised by the society to these new members that they may hereafter become veterans in her service. All whom we have installed this afternoon are now duly enrolled as full members of the Alpha of New Hampshire and Phi Beta Kappa. It will be their right and privilege henceforth to participate with us and with all the society's goodly host of members in all of the appropriate activities of our organization. This college is and should be dedicated first and foremost to the life of the mind. Phi Beta Kappa is a most tangible recognition that all of you join us in this commitment. We next turn to the initiation of honorary and alumni members. According to our Constitution, read earlier, it is our pleasure to receive into our membership two outstanding candidates who exemplify the principles of Phi Beta Kappa. The first elected to honorary membership is Thalia Wheatley. Professor Wheatley is the Lincoln Filing Professor of Psychological and Brain Sciences. Dr. Wheatley earned her BA from the University of Texas, Austin, and completed her MA in doctoral training in social psychology with Timothy Wilson and Daniel Wegner at the University of Virginia. After graduating, she received neuroimaging training as a postdoctoral NIH research fellow with Alex Martin, PhD, in the Laboratory of Brain and Cognition, directed by Leslie Ungerleader. Her research program investigates how ideas and emotions are created collectively and how one person can influence another in ways that ripple across the social webs they inhabit. Using diverse methods, including neuroimaging, natural language processing, cross-cultural behavior, and social network analysis, Professor Wheatley is building a framework to understand how minds couple with each other and why that coupling is so important to the stability and resilience of neural and social networks. She is the director of the Dartmouth Social Intelligence Laboratory and holds an appointment as external faculty at the Santa Fe Institute. Professor Wheatley. Thank you, Dennis. And uh, I was so touched to be selected as this year's honorary member. Um, one of the requirements, I don't know if you know this, uh, to be an honorary member is that you didn't achieve Phi Beta Kappa in college. And I can assure you, I was not even close. I didn't even apply to college. Uh, I defaulted into college because at that time, I don't know if this is still true, if you uh, were a high school student in Texas in the top 10% of your class, you just got a postcard one day in your mailbox saying that you were in. Um, so I ended up going to college. Um, and my sole ambition was to get out in three years and just pass. So I got C's my first year. I took as many classes as I could in order to get, uh, get out early. And I just shoehorned every easy, or what I thought would be an easy class into my schedule including fashion in the 1980s. And this class called Introduction to Social Psychology, which I took because I thought Introduction to Social Psychology was essentially three synonyms of the word easy. 
It was the hardest class I took in college and the most riveting, and it changed everything for me. It suddenly opened up uh, a life of learning. And now I teach intro psych. I mean, how many of you have taken intro psych at Dartmouth? All right, that's a lot of you. It worked out okay, and now I'm here uh, with Phi Beta Kappa. Um, as, as we just saw, some of you were in my intro psych class, uh, which is one of the biggest classes on campus. And if you remember one thing from that class, I hope it is the message that I start and end the class with, and what I want to say to you now, which is, most of what you've learned is wrong. Probably 50% of what I teach is wrong. I just don't know which 50% it is yet. If I did, I wouldn't teach you that half. But I don't know. Um, and psychology, as with any field, is riddled with mistakes and wrong-headed ideas and studies that won't replicate and theories that need to be revised with new data. Neuroscience, another thing I teach, is in its infancy. We don't really have a handle yet on how three pounds of wet matter between our ears gives rise to all of the things that we think, feel, and do. Why do we dream? What is consciousness? How do neurons encode information, memories, emotion? We don't know. These are wide open questions. It's not that we know nothing. Uh, and rest assured that you really did get the best education on the planet, and you did learn a lot of things, but learning immutable facts was never the end goal, because with education, there is no end goal, and that's not a bad thing, because if there was an end goal, if you left here today and dusted your hands comically and said, well, that learning thing is over, then you'd stop questioning, stop exploring, stop growing. As Professor Washburn said, the Phi Beta Kappa motto is love of wisdom or love of learning is the guide of life. And that's the point. It's the whole point. It's not about gaining bits of knowledge. It's about gaining a mindset, a posture of learning marked by deep intellectual humility. It's about staying open to new ideas, new data points, and alternative points of view. It means getting comfortable with not knowing, with uncertainty. It means avoiding the false sense of security offered by pat explanations and premature conviction. I'll leave you with my favorite quotation by the late Richard Feynman, which is, I can live with doubt and uncertainty and not knowing. I think it is much more interesting to live not knowing than to have answers that might be wrong. Get comfortable with doubt and uncertainty Stay open. Let your love of learning guide your life. I'm grateful that I and the rest of the Dartmouth faculty got to teach you these principles during these formative years. Thank you very much for this honor. Um, I have to confess, I'm an honorary member as well. I couldn't make it in college. But back in my day, we didn't have great inflation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's now my honor and pleasure uh, to move to alumni membership. And elected alumni membership is William Phillips, who's a screenwriter, director, visiting associate professor here at Dartmouth College, and a member of the great class of 1971. Every class is a great class, I guess. Bill Phillips has written for most of the major studios, networks, and cable companies. He won the Ace Award for Best Screenplay with John Carpenter for El Diablo, was nominated for the Edgar Award with Brian Dennehy for Shadow of a Doubt, and adapted Peter Moss's In a Child's Name, which was nominated for an Emmy as Best Miniseries. He has adapted Stephen King and Carol shoot, and has directed one feature for Paramount, There Goes the Neighborhood, which he wrote. He has been a member of the Writers Guild of America since 1980, and has written about 50 screenplays, half of which have been, have been produced. His first produced screenplay was Summer Solstice, starring Henry Fonda and Myrna Loy. Lately, he has returned to film production as head of Northern Lights Productions out of Vermont. His last documentary, Sabra, has won several awards. His current field project is The Final Climb, which has several Dartmouth alumni, faculty, staff, and students on its crew. Bill graduated as a senior fellow in film from Dartmouth 
1971, received his MFA from USC in 1973. And at Dartmouth, Bill teaches screenwriting one and two, and Miles 226, which is graduate screenwriting. Bill. Hi, this is a real honor, and I think when you've lived during seven decades, you learn more to appreciate honors. There, I think anybody who accomplishes anything in life gets good reviews for some of it, and bad reviews for others of it, and you never really know where it's coming from. You often don't know who's writing the reviews. But this is one of the good moments, so thank you again. Um, being a member of the class of 71, I don't think I've ever referred to it as the great class, but <laughs> I'll let others judge. Um, we do have a special affinity to the class of 21, I guess because it's 50 years later. Um, in, um, when I was in school, same thing. I, I had a B average. And I, I don't even think I even knew what Phi Beta Kappa was. Um, but what I really, the only thing I wanted to say is that the thing that has stuck with me about Dartmouth and about education for all these years is that I'm convinced, and this is the reason I came back to Dartmouth, um, I'm convinced that Dartmouth really is dedicated to anybody learning whatever they want to learn. And I've learned not to take that for granted. I have somewhat experience with, with several schools, but at Dartmouth, when I was a student, there was, there was no film major. There were classes in film in, in English, and in comp lit, in uh, Russian and French, there were ancillary subjects that you could cobble together, which I tried to do with art and music. Um, but the thing that was unique about Dartmouth, in my experience, and has been since, is that when I wanted to learn film, people listened, and people made it possible. And in lots of schools, I would say most schools, that's not the case. There are bureaucracies, and that's not to say there isn't bureaucracy here, but the thing that's amazing, I think, about Dartmouth, and always has been, is that for some reason, the culture of this place, and I don't know how you, how you shoehorn a culture, I don't know how you make a culture exist, but the culture has been the same. There, there's an, a diversity enough of faculty with talents in so many different areas, but they're all, they're all amenable to helping the student develop what they want to develop. Um, that doesn't mean the student ha doesn't have to jump through several hoops, but, um, but I know so many examples of people who have been able to study what they want to study even though it wasn't part of the curriculum to begin with, special majors, senior fellowships. So I'm very grateful to Dartmouth in general for that. And I'm grateful to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Thalia, and congratulations. 
The only new items of business are as follows. We now display an example of the Phi Beta Kappa certificate, which our secretary, Kate Sowell, has hand-lettered for each of you. Um, I have to say, that these, it takes a lot of work for Kate to make these. These are little works of calligraphic art. We didn't run these off, we didn't run these off a copying machine. Uh, and um, the certificates should mean, not just because you're in Phi Beta Kappa, but they have special meaning. They uh, they're really were made for each of you individually. Your certificate, along with new membership materials and a length of pink and blue ribbon, will be sent to the address on file with the registrar's office. Should you wish, Kate, to send it to another address, please email her before June 22nd. The pink and blue ribbons are suitable for framing with your certificate or to be used as a bookmark. The pink and blue ribbon was designed especially for the Alpha of New Hampshire at Dartmouth to reflect the official colors of Phi Beta Kappa established in 1781 on the charter to Harvard College and in 1787 on the charter to Dartmouth College. You will also have found a pink and blue honor cord on your seats today. Uh, please wear this, these cords at the commencement exercises tomorrow to celebrate your induction and to make all of your fellow students feel bad. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Secretary Sowell also has a few remarks before we adjourn. Thank you. So your induction today can be just the beginning of your involvement in Phi Beta Kappa, should you choose. One way to be involved is through a local Phi Beta Kappa association, which is an organization of Phi Beta Kappa members located in many metropolitan areas, including Boston and New York. Through Phi Beta Kappa associations, members can network, attend cultural events, join a book club, or give back to the, through the community and engage in the spirit of love of learning is a guide of life. If there's not an association in your area, you can stay connected on social media. Join Phi Beta Kappa's LinkedIn group with over 30,000 members. Follow Phi Beta Kappa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Visit pbk.org website for online lectures and events. The Society's National Arts and Sciences Initiative provides an outlet for those looking to be more involved in advocacy. But wherever you go and whatever you do, please stay connected with the Society by making sure to update your email address with them if you ever change it. That's why I asked you originally to put in your email that was the email that you would have after Dartmouth. So um, Phi Beta Kappa wants to um, be in touch with you, and you may want to be in touch with them. Um, there are no dues to be a member of Phi Beta Kappa. You are now all members for life. Um, they may ask you for money, and you may choose to give it or not as you please. Um, before we finish, I have a short video for you about the Phi Beta Kappa secret handshake. Hi, I'm Fred Lawrence, Secretary and CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Congratulations on your election to Phi Beta Kappa. If no one has shown you the secret handshake yet, it's my pleasure to do so now. The secret handshake actually goes back centuries to when we really were a secret society, and the symbol when two members pass each other on the street was to take these two fingers, draw them across the mouth to say our lips are sealed. Well, our lips aren't sealed anymore. We want the whole world to know you're a member of Phi Beta Kappa. But when two members meet, it's those same two fingers clasped, and that's the secret handshake. I really look forward someday and hopefully very, very soon to meet all of you in person and to be able to share a proper Phi Beta Kappa greeting. Congratulations and welcome to the Phi Beta Kappa family. <laughs> so I will admit I learned it slightly differently, which also will give you a laugh, is that you hold up your hand like this, and then do this, all right, and then you grasp the two fingers with your neighbor. So you, you live long and prosper, and then you shake hands. So uh, it, there, there are local variations. <laughs> So, lastly, before you leave Spalding this afternoon, you have one more important requirement to complete for your induction into Phi Beta Kappa. At the front of the stage, you'll notice that there's a small table with an open book that has already been signed by our two new members. The book is one in a series where almost all inductees in the Dartmouth chapter have signed since our founding in 1787. 
By signing the book, you are making your mark on Dartmouth Phi Beta Kappa history. After we adjourn, I will dismiss you by section and then by row. In each section, please move out of your seats by row, maintaining three feet distancing. Proceed through the aisles up here to sign the book. Use your personal pen that you get to keep forever, and you will notice that the ink is very slightly green um, to remind you of Dartmouth. And then you will proceed across the stage and out the door over here. Um, for those of you who were inducted in November, please put the, the um, initials junior in parentheses after your induction. So just as we had a challenge all coming in here and maintaining social distancing, now we will have a challenge of exiting. But there's a, just a few more words before that. Thank you. As I am not conscious of the desire for other new business to come before this session, I will accordingly entertain a motion for adjournment at this time. Now you're all members. Yeah, you're all members. So moved. Do I have a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I didn't think so. <laughs> I declare this meeting of Alpha of New Hampshire, Phi Beta Kappa, duly adjourned. Thank you all for your attendance. The best to your family and friends, and congratulations. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a section over here, and you should come like row by row by row, maintaining about three feet apart, come up, sign the book, and walk out the door over here. Thank you. Congratulations. Just a city boy. Born and raised in South Detroit. Thank you. Congratulations.